Hi, in this lesson, we'll take a look at nested loops. In a previous lesson, we learned how to use for loops in our programs to repeat sequences of code a specific number of times. In this lesson, we are going to learn how we can combine for loops to create more complex programs. To get started, let's practice writing a simple for loop. Pause the video to see if you can come up with a for loop that will print out a list of numbers from 1 to 5 on the same line. Here's the implementation of that for loop. Notice that we used print instead of print line so that the numbers can all appear on the same line. We also ended the loop by using less than 6, but we could have written less than or equal to 5. Now that we've created this simple loop, how can we use that code to create a times table where each line begins with the next whole number and includes the first five multiples of that whole number? With what we know right now, we can implement this by writing five separate for loops that will print each line out individually. But writing out each for loop is an incredibly repetitive process. We can actually fix this issue by putting our original for loop inside of another for loop that will print out all five lines. Just as we had learned with if statements, putting a loop inside of another loop is called nesting. Let's take a look at the example exercise in more detail. Here we have a nested for loop that prints a 5 by 5 times table. The loop begins by initializing the line variable. Next, the for loop checks the condition of the Boolean expression to determine if the for loop should execute. Since line is less than 6, the loop will execute. The first line of code in the for loop happens to be another for loop. Now we initialize number from the inner for loop and set its value to 1. Since number is less than 6, the inner for loop now will begin to execute. The only line of code in the inner for loop is a print statement. This print statement is multiplying the value of line and number. Since both have been initialized at 1, the value of number times line is 1, and 1 is printed in the console. Note that we add a open quote space close quote at the end of the string so that when the next value is printed, there's a space between them. Because we are inside of the inner loop, the next execution is a call to the inner loop increment, which increases number by 1. Before we can move on to the code outside the inner for loop, the inner for loop needs to complete its execution. The next step after the increment is a check of the Boolean expression. Remember, we only initialize number at the beginning of the for loop. The print statement executes again. This time, number is equal to 2, so number times line is 2 and is printed to the console. Increment is then increased again and the number is 3. The inner Boolean expression is still true, so the code executes again. Number times line is 3, so it is printed to the console. Number increments again, making it 4. The Boolean is true, so the code continues to execute. And number times line is printed to the console. Number increments, passes the Boolean expression, and prints number times line to the console. Now, number gets incremented to 6. This is where our program gets interesting. Number now does not pass the Boolean expression, and the inner for loop stops execution. Now, we exit that for loop and move to the code that directly follows the inner loop. In this case, we are adding a print line statement so that the next line of code printed to the console is on a new line. It's important to note that number now no longer exists in the scope of our program, as it was only initialized inside the inner for loop. If we tried to make a call to number somewhere outside of the inner for loop, this would throw an error, indicating that number has yet to be declared or is out of scope. When writing nested loops, it's important to pay attention to where our variables exist in the program to avoid making errors. Now that the outer for loop has gone through all of the code within the brackets, the increment increases the value of line by 1. Since line is still less than 6, the for loop executes again. Since the first line of code in the outer for loop is another for loop, we reinitialize number 
and set its value to 1, and the whole process begins again. Number is less than 6, so the for loop executes. Now when we print number times line, the value of line has increased to 2, but number has returned to 1. When printed to the console, the new starting value is 2. Now that the loop is over, number is increased by 1. The Boolean expression is still true, so the loop executes again. Now number times line is 4 and is printed to the console. Number is incremented again, passes the Boolean expression, and prints the result of number times line to the console. Number increments again, passes the Boolean expression, and prints the product of number times line to the console. Number is incremented, passes the Boolean expression, and prints the product of number and line. Number is incremented one last time, but does not pass the Boolean expression. The for loop stops executing, and the next line of code is executed following the loop. The print line statement begins a new line for the next iteration of the for loop. Now that the outer for loop has completed, it returns to the increment and increases the value of line by 1. This process repeats each time until the value of line is greater than or equal to 6. Each iteration will print the value of line and each subsequent value in the times table. The program finally stops once line equals 6, and whatever code follows the outer for loop will execute. Something to note is that the total number of times a nested for loop is run can be calculated by the number of iterations through the outer loop multiplied by the number of iterations through the inner loop. This can be a helpful calculation when trying to figure out what to set your for loop increment and Boolean conditions to. Here is a view of a nested for loop flowchart. See if you can trace the execution. As stated earlier, it's very important to pay attention to the placement of variables in your program, especially as we continue to add control structures that have different levels of variable access. Because the variable outside loop is outside of both loops and is executed prior to the rest of the code, outside loop can be used in both for loops and in any code that follows the loops. The variable outer is initialized in the outer for loop and can only be used within the brackets of the outer for loop. Because the inner for loop is inside of the outer for loop, the variable outer can be used in the inner for loop. The variable inner can be used only between the brackets that enclose the inner for loop. If the variable inner is used outside of the for loop, an error will occur. These different layers of the program each have their own variables, so make sure to know where each one can be accessed. Nesting is also possible using while loops, or a combination of while loops and for loops. Here are two examples of nesting using while loops and a while for loop combination. This is the same times table problem that we just solved, just written using different control structures. You might notice that both of these examples use more lines of code than our original. As we previously discussed, because this particular problem has a specific number of iterations that we expect the program to go through, for loops are a more efficient solution than using while loops or a combination of the two. When considering which control structures to use, always think about whether the iterative process has an exact number of iterations or requires more flexibility. Now that you've learned about nested loops, it's your turn to try them out in the editor.